All right, everyone, let's get started. So this is our last color theory um, back to basics, okay? So we're going to just jump right in and we're gonna be talking about analogous color theory today. And it's really simple. It's basically analogous colors are colors that are right next to each other. And typically analogous colors are um, a, a group of three colors on the color wheel that are right next to each other. So like these three right here, this would be analogous. These three would be analogous. These three would be analogous and so on and so forth. So um, we are going to be doing two analogous projects using the window set. So same stamps and actually technically not the same because I used a different flower on this one just because I didn't want to have to clean off this one. <laughs> but um, it is very, very similar and you can do the same thing. But we are going to be learning how to use analogous colors and um, they're very, very simple, super fun. So um, let's get started. Let's see, do, 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 do. Thank you, Lee. Thanks, everybody. Um, Pat, I work in healthcare. There's so much opportunity in healthcare. I'm sure you'll find something soon. Thank you. I know, it's always a guaranteed job, right? <laughs> we are always gonna need healthcare providers and, and um, from, nurses to doctors to PAs to MAs to CNAs to all of the other um, staff involved. So yes, we will absolutely need everybody. Okay, thank you for that encouragement. All right, so everyone, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And I am going to be using the watercolor window set. Okay, so this one is 5014. Also, the watercolor foliage set for 5126. And I'm going to be using this one in the center. Watercolor foliage set for. Yes, Pat, we will. We'll always need microbiologists. <laughs> That's very true, too. <laughs> Flower set 4052. And I'll be using um, this little guy, but you could just use um, the dots that I'm gonna show you. That's just the one I'm using um, so I don't have to clean my stamp, but I'm gonna be using um, this little dots right there. Um, it's so cute, I love that set. And that one's um, 5009 mini flower set. Okay, and let's see. Once again, we'll be using, we'll be making these two little projects. And if you have your color wheel handy, go ahead and grab it. If you have not made your color wheel, you can take a little ride back to part one and I show you how to make a color wheel with your own colors, okay? So let's go ahead and get started and I'm just gonna flip the camera around. Okay. So let's get going here. All right. So I am going to take my, oh, where is my watercolor paper? <laughs> I had it right next to me and then it was gone. So I'm going to grab, <laughs> oh my, you guys, my, my brain. So let me just show you again what we're gonna be making while I get some watercolor paper. Um, I am going to be making and showing you, thank you. I'm gonna show you how to make this, uh, these little projects using a, uh, a warmer theme and a cooler theme and um, how to use the, the warm green and the cool green as well in your uh, color scheme, okay? So Linda, finally got my color wheel finished last night. Perfect, yay. Natalie, great to see you. I saw your posts on the Art Impression Stamp Group. Great job, I love them, fantastic. Okay, so we are going to grab our color wheel. And just really quickly, because I know it's hard to see on the, um, on the other, the other uh, angle, the camera angle, because it's backwards. So I'm using the Windows 5014. 
I am using the watercolor mini flower set, this little guy right here. But you could use really any of these. It, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna use this flower from flower set one. And also 5126 watercolor foliage set four, this one in the center right there. Okay. So for our first color scheme, I'm going to choose, I'm gonna make them so that each one has a green in it, a very common green. So the first one is gonna be 177, 993, and 933. So I'm just gonna mark these using my little baubles here. And I'm gonna be using these three for this project. And, um, we are going to, hi Carol, no worries, welcome. Uh, we are going to go ahead and um, stamp out our, uh, our little window here. Now, because these are warmer tones, I want to add a little bit more brown into here because you can do it with a gray. Warm tones look okay with gray, but gray is generally speaking, a cool tone if you go with a true gray. I mean, there are warmer grays that you can use, but I really like to add a little bit more of the 969 um, onto the window when I'm doing a warmer color scheme. And anything that's using a yellow or a green yellow, um, you wanna use, you wanna think warmer tones, okay? So, um, oh, Natalie, you're so sweet. Thank you. Thanks for staying up too. I saw that you're in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> crazy oh my goodness you and my very sweet friend Nicole both in Belgium okay so I'm going to be using these three colors for this one 993 933 and 177 because these are analogous colors they're right next to each other and if you wanted to if you wanted to take this to the next step if you wanted a more intermediate um you know, project theme, you could also use the center color split its complement. So you could also use the 636 in here if you want to. You don't have to, and, and really because this is basics, we are just gonna focus on the analogous here, okay? All right. Now I am going to take my paper and I am going to use the smooth side because I feel like it shows up a little bit better on camera. So I'm gonna use the smooth side and I'm gonna take my, um, my little window and I'm gonna stamp both of these out. So the first one I'm going to stamp is, I'll do yellows on this side and then the blue theme on this side. So 969 and also 565. So I'm gonna take that 565 and actually this is upside down. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the 565 and I'm gonna go right over that whole window and we'll take this color and just go right over it just like that. Now I have a lot of color on this stamp, um, especially once I add the 969 on here to warm things up. I am going to have so much color that I need to stamp this off. I have got to stamp it off. It's going to be too much ink. So I'm gonna take a piece of watercolor paper and I'm gonna stamp that off. And then I can go straight to my project paper, just like that, okay? Now for this one, I'm gonna take off quite a bit of that ink because I want it to have more of a gray tinge. So I'm just gonna put a little of that 969 on first so that I get a gray, but I'm going to use mostly the 565 on this one because I want it to be more gray because I'm gonna be using the blues and the greens, uh, which look really, really good with a gray background, the underlying tone being gray. And I will take that and I will stamp it off once and I'll stamp it onto my project paper here. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and some water. And because my brush has just been sitting out drying, I'm gonna open that up. Look at all those bubbles. Do you see all those bubbles coming out? That 
would make my wash so uneven if I didn't release the bubbles out of the bristles. So you can push it up against the edge of the wall, you can kind of twist it around, but you really, don't push it down straight in. You wanna push it down from the side and open the bristles, okay? Okay, so I am going to take my brush and I am just going to start pulling out, we'll start over here. I'm gonna start pulling out some of this color in my window. It doesn't have to be a lot because I do want to leave most of the window and the wood um, uncolored. I just want a little bit of this to come out because a lot of it is actually going to have um, foliage and some flowers and then also we'll be doing the curtain as well, which I think is such a fun little um, tutorial. Okay. So I've got my window and I can zoom in just a little bit here. Maybe I'll put a bit in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take my 993, 993 and I'm gonna put it onto my palette. Just like that. And I'm gonna now put in my little, hi Sherry. I'm gonna put in my little curtain here. And it's so, so cute. Now you could add designs to this curtain if you want to. Um, I'm gonna keep it really basic, but you can definitely make this more involved, okay? So I'm gonna take this 993 and I'm actually going to start where the curtain gathers. If I start up at the top, I have a hard time being like, okay, where am I going down here? But for some reason, if I start where the curtain is gathered, it's a lot easier for me to come up and then to come down. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that 993 and I'm gonna start where the curtain is gathered. So I'm just going to pull this in and then I'll come right up here and then up, okay? And just so you can see where I'm hoping to go with this, you can see on here, this is where it's gathered right here. So I'm gonna start by doing a little line up into the top, and then I'll do another little line coming down. Hi, Deanna, good to see you. Okay, so then I'm gonna take the other little bit and come down. Okay, and this does not need to be perfect. Your curtain is gonna be gathered a little bit different every single time you do it. So don't worry about it being, you know, just so. And it doesn't have to actually hang as if it would in like a normal house. This is a whimsical uh, piece of art, okay? So it can just be the suggestion of curtains. Okay, now if you touch these lines, just so you know, it's gonna pull out some of that brown. Okay, so you don't wanna touch the lines. Now I'm going to turn this, okay, on the other side so that I can do the same thing. So I'm gonna go start where it's gathered. And then of course, this is the bottom of the curtain. That's okay, it doesn't matter which side I start on. And I'm gonna take that color, that 993, and I'm gonna dump it right in where I drew the line. And then I'm gonna come up and fill in these little areas with my yellow. Okay, so now I've got my little curtains, the basic of the curtains in. And I can, hi sister, Amanda, how are you? I know, isn't it fun? If you do it whimsical, you don't have to be perfect, right? That's the nice part about this, is you really do not have to have anything be perfect. 
I mean, it just frees you up to be creative. There are some technique things that you want to always be mindful of, but for the most part, you can just have fun. Okay, so now I'm going to take just a little bit more yellow and just dump that in. Notice we can layer these colors and make them stronger. Okay, so I'm going to add that. Okay, now because the yellow is really, um, it's not a very strong color, I do want to take my 993, so or my 933, and put a little bit on that on my palette. And I'm actually going to use this to put in um, the gathers here. And I want to draw some little lines because where, it, where the fabric puckers, it's actually going to have a little bit of a shadow, right? And it won't be a lot of a shadow, but it will have some shadows. And really, all you're doing is just giving that suggestion that there might be a few little shadows in here, some puckering. And if you wanted to outline your curtains with that color, you absolutely can. Okay. So now I'm just going to blend this out a little bit. It's a little strong, but don't worry about it. And then I'm going to take, um, now that I have my curtain in, Look how easy that is. You can do a curtain and then you could do like these little designs on it if you want to. Um, you can mask it in and actually stamp your foliage and flowers on the curtains, which is really, really cute. Um, so yeah, sky's the limit on curtains, okay? But they're really, really fun. So now I'm gonna take number 177 and this is the olive green. This is that warmer green. And I'm gonna pair that with this yellow. So I'm going to take the 177 and also this little green um, foliage from Flower Set 4 and I'm going to ink this up with the 177. I'm going to keep this warm. So I'm going to just take this right over the top just like that and let me zoom out a little bit. And then also a little bit on the bottom. Okay, and I'm just going to turn this just so I can get a nice angle here. Like so. Now we can just put our, full, or our flowers in, and I'm going to use 933 and this little dot, so the little dot stamp, and 933, and I'm going to take that ink it, and just start stamping these in. I think these are so cute. These little dots. And I'm gonna do that up here. Notice I'm just using the analogous colors that I've pre-selected from my color wheel. That's what I have to use. Okay, so I've kept within the colors that I've chosen. Now, remember, the neutrals out here, you can use with any color scheme, okay? These are just for your use, okay? But because I chose these three colors for my analogous theme, that's all I can use for the um, foliage and the flowers, the extra things, the curtains. Um, and then when I went and inked my window, I used this one, which is considered a neutral in, th in this um, and these parameters, Art Impressions, Watercolor, when we mix these together, that's going to give us a gray. So I did use this, but I also use that, right? Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just dab the little flowers right here. Dab, dab, dab. And I like to bring this color out just a little bit. Okay, same thing with the 993. I'm just going to take a little bit of that from my palette and I'm just going to add that in here because I think it's so cute 
when you blend that orange and the yellow. Don't worry about it being perfect. It's a blend of colors and you're using these colors freely. All right, so now I'm going to add water to my little leaves here. And then down here as well, I'm dabbing. Okay. We adopted Amanda in Arizona. We met her at a show in Arizona and we just, after that meeting, she was a huge help to us. She is a genius. Her brain, that girl can think through any problem that you have, especially technically. <laughs> and we had a problem with our iPad and she swooped in and we got to know her and she fixed our problems, but also we just fell in love with her and we said, you are ours now. <laughs> We're stealing you. <laughs> so I call her sister because she's an adopted family member, like many others are. But um, Amanda, we just, we absolutely adore you and so thankful that you've also adopted us. Okay, so I am going to now take my same colors. Now I want to have a little bit of a background in here, okay? So, Georgia, Amanda is the bomb. Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> she really is. She is just so awesome. Okay. So, I'm just going to take a little bit of this color and back up this little window here, okay? Doesn't have to be a lot, but you do want it to kind of sit back on something. All right, so now I'm gonna take that 993 again and just the detail tip. And I'm just gonna bring a little bit of detail into this curtain again with the 993 and just give it, cause the 993 is so, it's such a weak color. I can come in here with just the tip and not worry about it being too overbearing. But I really like that strong shadow in there. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my brush and just bring a little bit more of the shadow out on the door. I'll use my twin tone, maybe, my little brown twin tone. And I'm gonna add the details back into the stamp that I took out. with my detail tip of the twin tone. Okay, there's a little hinge right here. So we'll just do that. And then that is basically it for the warm one. Now you can go back in if you want to, and I'll show you this real quick. With the 969, if you want it to be a little bit um, warmer, you can come in with the 969 and you can add a little bit more brown. If you want to, you do not have to do this. Um, it's just an option if you want some uh, warmer tones in here, okay? I like a warmer gray like we've made with the brown, so it's totally up to you if you wanna leave it as is. Now, the inside of the window also, so, Generally speaking, it's probably not gonna be white inside, so we can just grab a little bit of this uh, window color and pull this out into the um, negative space in here. Just so that it's not white on the inside of the house, okay? All right, I know, isn't it fun? I know I don't use very much yellow, so it's really fun to get out my color wheel and be like, okay, I'm going to use these colors and then I gotta get creative. So for this one, we used these three colors in this image and then also that 969, okay? So you can see how you choose the colors and then just use those colors and incorporate them into your work. All right.
Now we're going to do the other one. And for the other one, I'm gonna use the other green. So I'm gonna use 249, 346, and 526. So another analogous um, color wheel, okay, or a uh, color scheme analogous, and it's going to be the cooler blues. So it's gonna be 249, 346, and 526. All right, here we go on the second one. Okay, are there rules follow to are there rules to follow when adding window treatments to the window? Mine never look right. Teresa, you know what? It's just it's honestly practice. I um you don't you certainly don't need them. You can do something like this if you don't want the window treatments. So these are also analogous color themes. This one is the um, 725, 856, and 925. And then this one is the same color scheme I'm using right now. So you don't have to have window treatments if you don't want to, um, but it's just a matter of practicing. I have found when I'm doing the window treatments, I have found that um, if I start where it's gathered and go from there, it becomes a lot easier. It's like making almost kind of a, a little M instead of trying to do one line. Um, I find that to be a little bit easier to do that. Jerry says, so if you choose a fourth color, it would be directly across from the center color. Um, Jerry, you can either use a fourth color right next to it. So you can have a four color analogous scheme. Um, but if you wanted to do a split analogous, you would do the complementary of the middle color. So you would do your three, you would get your middle color, and then you would do the complementary. So in this case, my, my other color I could use would be 856. Okay. So that's totally up to you. Um, but that also makes a really nice color scheme because you've got the, um, the stress between these two complements because they're they're so opposite there's sort of a stress in the color it's not in a bad way stress but there is a um since they're opposites they they basically make the other shine um brighter than any of the other colors would so you're going to have um this play with the the split complement but you also have your analogous theme. So that is more intermediate, okay? But you can do it. All right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take this one now and I'm going to start doing the same thing. So I've chosen 249, 346, and 526. I'm gonna start pulling the color out of the lines now. And because I did the 969 first, and the 565 second, I'm going to have a blue or gray on my window. So it does matter which way you put the colors when you're doing a gray. If you have the blue first, it's gonna come out more of a warm gray, more of a brownie gray, because your brown is the, the, the last one on the stamp. If you do the brown first and the blue last, it's going to look more of a blue gray, more cool. Okay. So what pencil? I have a, what brand is your pencil? Um, do you mean my brush? You might mean my brush. This one is the Connoisseur number no. four, um, round bristle brush, synthetic bristle. Natalie, if you don't mean my brush, um, I use, typically when I'm using pencils, I will use uh, something like a Statler, but I didn't use a pencil in this one, so I'm wondering, um, okay, yes, brush. So the brush is a number four connoisseur round bristle synthetic, and it's on the website, and you can see it's like used to the point where the, the name is kind of coming off. These are so great. And um, you can use them for many, many years <clears throat> as long as you store them correctly and you don't leave them in your water. Okay, so I'm going to take these 
this brush now and pull out the colors. Don't worry about it if you have some um, ink in your windows or, or whatnot. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to take now number 526. 526. And then also, I'll take my brush and I will dip that and do my curtain on here. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to do the top part of this, starting from the fold, okay, so where it's gathered, that's where I'm starting, and then I'll come back down this way. If you do it like this, it's just less far to have to make a single line. <laughs> I'm not good at, you know, um, freehanding stuff. So if I can make it super easy, I will do that. I always like to find an easier way to do things. So I'm going to take my blue and just fill in my curtains. You could also do a curtain across the top. I think that would be so cute. You could also do a little animal in here if you want. Okay. Now I'm gonna go the other way. And we're gonna do the same thing. So I'll take that 526 and I'll start at the gather. And remember, they don't have to be gathered at the exact same spot. So it's fine if you have it gathered a little bit off from each other. You know, think about when you gather your curtains at home. Are they exactly the same on either side? Probably not, right? So don't worry about it on here. You're not even going to notice. And then we'll do the top. And that's going to come right up here. And we will go just like this and fill that in. Okay, so I have my blue curtains now. And I will take that 526 again. And I'll put a little dot here because I want that to be where the gather is. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of that color again and just come up and put in the puckering, the shadow. So you'll go just like this. You can outline it a little bit, then have your puckering. Okay. Put a little bit more here because the other side is really strong <laughs> and that's okay. Okay. Teresa, me too. Isn't it a pretty window? Um, Natalie, feel free. You can share whatever photos you want. Yes. I don't know how you can do that. I don't know if you can do that. Share a photo into the comments. Um, but if you're not a, well, I know you're a member of the stamp group. And by the way, if you're not a member of the Art Impression Stamp Group, um, head over there. There's tons of inspiration. It's not our official page. We don't run it. Um, Carla Eckes Morgan does. but um, And Ruth Ann's the moderator, and they are just so wonderful. Kathy Akers is also a big part of it. And they have created this really welcoming, warm, inviting group. And it's all about Art Impressions. So head over there. If you need some, um, a little extra inspiration because it's just, it's amazing. Okay. So now I'm going to take the little, uh, the little foliage again, but this time I'm going to use 249 because this one's part of my analogous, uh, color theme. So 249. So that's going to be this one. I've already used this one. And I'm gonna go 249 to add my foliage. So I'll stamp off, I'll stamp off the 177 so I get lots of this off. Okay. And I'll go 249. 
just like this. And I'm gonna go over, and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the other side, just so you can see the differences in the color themes, okay? And then I'll go on the other side. Linda, I know, isn't everyone so sweet? I know, I love, I don't always get to get over to the group, but I love hopping over there and seeing what everybody's making. Okay. So, just like that. And I'll take my little flower this time. So normally I would use the little dots again, but I don't wanna clean them. So I'm just gonna get this little daisy bunch and I'm gonna use number 346 cause that's the third color in my, um, in my color scheme. So I'm gonna take that ink it and I'm gonna start just stamping these in wherever I want to. And I'll stamp some up here. Maybe a little one here. And maybe one more, I don't know, just a tiny one up there. Okay. So, Heather, I think you had a question. When I go to, when you go to sign your project, could you give some tips on how to come up with your signature? My name is Long and I don't know how I should sign mine. Um, so you could always do, if your name is long, you could always, um, do just your initials. So if you did like H O S, you could do that, or you could sign your, um, initial, your first letter of the, of your first name. And then, um, your last names, you could do that. Um, if you have a really, really long name, I would suggest just initialing and still putting the date. You know, also you could sign without including every single letter in your name. So my my signature actually, it really doesn't have a lot of the uh, specific letters. You can see that the first two are um, the letters to my name, but the other ones don't really look <laughs> super legible. <laughs> So it's totally up to you. Um, there's, if you have a really long name and you, you don't feel like you can sign your whole name, um, I would do something like that with the initials. However, you could do something like um, if you were to take, you know, and, and sign you and you had a longer name, you could do your first name, second name, third name, and then um, the date like that so that you keep it together so it's at least compact and then start when you're kind of in the project. Um, so however you want to do it, um, but you absolutely must sign. That's a non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Gina. Trademark. You could totally have a trademark. Okay, so I'm going to go back in now with my blue twin tone. And we'll just kind of come in here and fill in some of these little areas. So I use the brown on the previous one, and then I'll use the blue on this one because it goes a little bit more with my theme. And then once again, no problem, Heather. No problem. I wish I had like a, just a, a really good answer for you <laughs> on that one. But I like Gina's idea of having a trademark. I think that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of the color from the window and just fill in some of this interior just so it's not super white. Okay. So, all right, now I'm gonna sign mine. So I'm gonna take that twin tone and I'll just do something like that. So you can't really even articulate the letters in my signature if I were to show you and get close that really doesn't even look like anything except the first initials and maybe the d and the b but everything else is kind of a scribble and then I'll take the brown and sign this one just so it's cohesive all right, and once again, <clears throat> for that second one, I used 
these three analogous. And I saw Georgia, you mentioned um, that you used a five um, color analogous theme for your foundations. Fantastic. I love it. You can totally do that. Um, don't worry about the amount of colors, if especially if it's a really big um, color, you know, a big thing to color, you can have more colors. If it's a really small thing like this, I would encourage you to just stay with a couple because you can get really overwhelmed really fast when you're doing um, small projects, but the foundations are so big that you can totally um, work with a bunch of colors. But just for the simplicity of basics, definitely just pick a few of them. You could even do the split if you want to. Um, so here is that. And let's see, let's see. Um, I was gonna, let's see, where's my, what was I gonna do? Um, where did I put my, uh, let's see, my um, project for next week? <laughs> it's like, on, seriously. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys. What am I going to do with myself? Okay, so for next week, I found it. Oh, that's not it. Oh, yes. Thank you. For next week, we are going to do the barn. Okay, so this one's going to be 4807. Um, this is the barn. I'm going to show you how to do uh, the barn with spring and summer and also winter. Okay, okay. So I hope that you enjoyed part three of color theory. I hope this really helps you. Uh, we will kind of visit this as we go along with our different lessons, which is kind of why I wanted to, to do this sort of early in the series, because I want you to have your color wheel so that you can be like, okay, how do I want to color this? What do I want to do? So, um, okay, so I am going to flip back over. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> I feel like that almost went flying. Hi. <laughs> okay. You guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you had a great time. Um, use your color wheel, okay? Use these, these lessons. Now, if you're super into color theory, there is so much information on color theory on... Google on the internet. Um, excuse me, my goodness. Uh, maybe I'll revisit it at some point if, you know, down the line, if we're ready to do something a little bit more intermediate. But for right now, I really want to stay basic, okay? So if you're finding that you're like, wow, I love color theory. There's so much information on it. And I just, I invite you to go discover. Okay, so um, thank you again for joining me today. And um, I am going to say goodbye and I will see you next week. And if you can't get enough watercolor, join Mother Bee, Mother Bee, Queen Bee. She is also my mother. Queen Bee tomorrow morning, Wednesday, uh, Watercolor Wednesday, 10 a.m. She's going to be showing you more of the releases. So get excited. Check us out on Instagram. Um, of course, join us on Facebook. And Pinterest has tons of inspiration. Again, join uh, Carla's um, Facebook Art Impressions group, uh, Art Impressions stamp group. And um, I love you all. I'll see you next week. Mwah. Bye.